Hello again everybody and welcome back to the fifth and uh, final finale video in our OpenCV uh, car, count car counting series using Visual Basic. And uh, the only thing I'm going to mention before we dive into the project today is that it's a prerequisite for this video to have viewed the first four videos uh, and also the OpenCV uh, configuration and installation using Visual Basic video and I will link to all those in the description below. So please refer to those if you have not already. And let's go ahead and dive into implementing car counting here. So GIT, HUB, MIC, RO, microcontrollers and more and take out the spaces and I will link to this repository in the comments below as well but you can get to it this way also. So if we go to repositories and then just a minute here while that loads and we'll fire Visual Studio as well. And my internet's just gotten a little slow on us. There we go. And so we can look for OpenCV3 Car Counting Visual Basic. And we can open up Visual Studio here, close out the splash screen, and let's take a quick look at the repository contents. It's pretty much the, a similar repository structure to the previous video. We really just have the blob class, and then we have FRM main, and then the readme. The only difference is the video now is this video that I recorded of some cars driving under a bridge where I live. So you're going to want to uh, go ahead and download this video, and then we'll go ahead and build a project here. So let's copy that, and then we can go to File, New, Project. And when it comes up here in just a second, we have to add the blob class as well. We'll get to that momentarily. So let's paste in the repository name. So we're going to choose Visual Basic Windows Forms application, choose our name, location, uncheck those, and choose OK. And we can go ahead and name our form and set up our references. And if you're unclear on any of these steps, please see the installation and configuration uh, Visual Basic OpenCV video, which I will link to in the description below. So let's go ahead and do rename FRM main. And yes, we would. Okay, and save. And now we're going to go ahead and start the project. And we're going to get an error because there's one reference that we have to update manually. And that's going to be this one right here. And there we go. Save and close out of there. And now we can exit out of that and out of that and save. And let's go ahead and do our references next. So up here we're going to choose Configuration Manager and then uh, new and then x64 any CPU create solution platforms close that now says x64 so now we're going to go to project add reference and then browse and we're going to add these four DLLs we're using uh, mgucv 3.1.0 at this time and then we're going to go ahead and choose OK and then we're going to go to project and then uh, add existing item and we're going to jump to this location here which I'm copying and that location which I'm copying and pasting out of the uh, installation cheat sheet again linked to in the description below uh, and then we're going to choose those four after we choose to view all files and then add and then save and now we're going to go back to here so let's go ahead and add blob so we can go to project uh, add new item and then, okay, I just forgot to update these DLLs here. So for these four, we want to go to Properties and then change this to Copy Always. There we go. Don't want to forget that step. And then we're going to go to uh, Project and Add New Item. And then we'll choose Class. And this will be blob.vb. And we can go ahead and copy and paste that in. And just to show you where I'm working out of in the other screen here, so if we simply choose Blob and then go to Raw, and then we can just copy and paste out of that. So copy and paste there, and then we're going to go back to here, and then we're going to go to uh, FRM Main, and then Raw, and we're going to copy and paste in just the top part, and then we're going to build up the form. And since this is the finale video, I think I'll actually uh, go through the steps again to build up the form. So if we go to, let's see, move this over here. So for Form Main, let's move that down a little bit and paste that in. So we're going to add each of these components here. So Table Layout Panel. And let's see here, so Toolbox and Properties. So Table Layout Panel is going to be in Containers, which is going to be right here. And so now we're going to expand that, and then we're going to add a row, I believe. Yes, edit rows and columns. And just momentarily, we're going to change these to 33 and 33 and 34 for percent. We're going to fine tune that a little bit later, but that's okay for now. And then let's go ahead and name that. So table layout panel. And then we're going to go back to here, and we're going to add button open file. So that's going to be a button there, and that's going to be there. And then we're going to add 
label chosen file. So let's see, where's label? There we go. And then we're going to add that. And then we're going to add uh, image box on the center left position. And if you don't have these controls in your toolbox, again, see, please, uh, please see the installation um, OpenCV uh, configuration video that I did record, and I explained how to get those there. Uh, and that will be linked in the description below. And then we're going to go to, uh, let's see, text box. We're going to put that down there. And we're going to call that text info. And so that's going to, whoop, and that's going to be that. And then we have just one more, I believe, open file dialog. And then we're going to pop that down here. Where is open file dialog? There we go. And go ahead and name that. And now we've named everything, I believe, so we can go ahead and set our properties. So for these two at the top, we're going to set the font to 12. And then we're going to go ahead and set the anchor property to left and right. And then for the button, let's go ahead and set auto size to true and auto size mode to grow and shrink. And then we'll set the text to open file. And then for the label here, we're going to set the text align to just left and we can delete the text. And now for the image box and text box at the bottom, we can set column span to two and then doc to fill. And then we have some particular properties here to set for the image box. So let's set enable to false to prevent accidental zooming. And then we can set border style to fix single and then size mode to zoom. And let's see here for the text box, we can set some properties here. Word wrap to false, multi-line to true and scroll bars to both. And let's see what's left now. If we go to the table layout panel, edit rows and columns, and if we go to rows, we can set the top row to auto size, and if we go to columns, we can set the first column to auto size, and if we go back to rows, we can set row two, which is gonna be the image, to let's say 80%, and we can set the text box, which is just gonna dis display a little bit of text, potentially, if need be, to 20%. And then we're going to go to dock for the table layout panel and fill. And that should do it for the form. Let's go ahead and test it. And everything should resize nicely as we resize the form and move it around. And sure enough, it does. And there we go. So now we're ready to go back to our main code here. And basically, well, first we have to make our two events that we haven't made yet. So if we go back to the design view and click on the form, so you can click on the title bar here anyway to choose the form is good. And then we're going to go to events. And I believe we need to add a form closing event. Yes, we do. And again, to determine that, I'm simply taking a look at the code that we're um, working from here. And I see that there's a form closing event and then a click event for the button. So we're going to go ahead and create both of those. So form closing and pop that in and then we're going to add a few spaces here and then we're going to add a button click event so where is there we are button file just making sure that we name that correctly before we double click on it because we don't want this name in here to be uh, incorrect and now we're just going to update our spacing a little bit and now we're ready to copy and paste in basically everything that isn't there already so there's the member variable section and then we have these two comment lines so one there one there and take out the unnecessary space and then we are going to copy and paste in the body of form closing which is just two lines and then button open file click which is a little longer but still not that long because at the end of button file click we call track blobs and update GUI and so we're going to paste that in as well as the other helper functions that are after track blobs and update GUI so basically we can pretty much just swipe down almost to the end of the uh, text we're copying and pasting out of except we don't choose in class at the end so there we go paste in all our remaining functions and let's just do a slow sweep up to the top here make sure there's no red lines nothing unusual happened okay looks pretty good good so far okay so now if we do save and I just remembered I forgot to set the font in the text box so let's go ahead and set that to 12 and then 
courier new and where are you courier new there you go okay so I think we're ready to go ahead and run it and one thing I should mention before you go ahead and run it is you'll definitely if you have not already um, you'll want to download this cars driving under bridge um, mp4 footage that I shot um, of cars driving underneath a bridge uh, near me and to save some time I already did that ahead of time and downloaded it to the projects directory here and then so we're going to go ahead and choose run and Go ahead and maximize that, open file, and Visual Studio 2015 projects, and then we can choose that Cars Driving Under Bridge file. And let's first take a look at all our pre-processing steps. So here is the thresholded image, and here is our contours image. And then you can see we don't get necessarily very clean blobs with the contours image, but when we go to the uh, convex holes image, we get much more uh, clean blobs. So often convex holes are used as a step after contours to get cleaner blobs when you're performing blob detection and tracking. And then here's uh, current frame blobs. So that's um, that's the blobs in the current frame only. Whereas our next um, window here, blobs, those are the blobs that have actually been matched to. And again, I'll explain that in a moment, but it's similar to the previous program. And then here's the uh, output results. So uh, let's go ahead and change this to release so it runs a little bit faster. And maybe if we go to main here and we can comment out some of these displays for the moment. So let's see, let's comment out these four draw, draw and show contours function calls just so the program runs faster. And actually, let's try it with debugging those commented out. I bet that'll be a lot faster for us. So go ahead and fire it up. And then we can see the program in action. So if we go to cars driving under bridge, and I forgot to comment one of them out, but that's okay. So anyway, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And I've watched this. Um, I've gone through this actually entire uh, video frame by frame, and I can assure you there is not a single car that's missed, and there's not a single car that's double counted. The, the accuracy rate is 100% here, so this works out really well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the code, and well, let's go ahead and do that now. So um, the beginning of this is going to be pretty similar to um, some of the early programs from this series, the play video and uh, image subtraction uh, programs. So at the top here, we simply have a member variable section that's mostly colors, and then our video capture object, and our uh, flag variable to keep track of if the form is closing or not. And then if we have button open, file uh, underscore click. So here we're simply opening the file and doing some basic error checking. And then we call track blobs and update GUI. So here we have our two frames that we're working with. And of course we copy those. Or actually we get those rather uh, at that step. And we copy them later on here. But uh, there are some specific things to counting cars at this point. So we declare our horizontal line. That was that red line you saw. Or it actually blinks green as a car crosses it and we define that to be basically 35% um, of the way down the image from starting at the top and you want to pick an area that's kind of nice and in the middle because at that point your blobs are the cleanest and therefore are going to be detected the best as they cross the line and so here we're setting up the two points of the crossing line um, 0 and 1 and then we jump into our while loop and uh, after we copy our frames, we do uh, our usual uh, difference and threshold calculation. So we convert everything to grayscale, then we Gaussian blur it. Uh, then we do abstiff, then we do threshold. And then we do our morphological options uh, operations. So that's, um, we do two dilates in an erode, but then in a loop here where we do that twice. And we use a five by five uh, window for that. Um, for both the dilates and the erode, and I just found experimentally that happened to work out pretty well. Uh, and then we uh, get our contours image, and we, we would show it here if we didn't comment it out. But of course, you can uncomment that out if you like. And then um, here we have our convex holes, so we get our convex holes from our contours. And then we make sure that everything is within these uh, boundaries here that we're checking on. And if so, we add that to our current frame blobs. And then supposing that we're past the first frame, Every, every frame after that, we're going to call this function here, match current frame blobs to existing blobs. And I did mention this briefly in the previous program, but um, just to kind of go over it again. The idea here is suppose that this is a blob here, these three black circles, and then the dash uh, line is our prediction. And again, we covered how to do predictions in the third video in the series. And then this here would be another uh, blob moving along, and then this is a predicted position. And then this here would be another blob moving along, and this is a predict predicted position. So what these uh, blue circles are, 
would be, um, let's say that was the actual frame that we just received. So how do we match them up? Well, what we're going to do is for each of the blue circles, for each of the blobs in the current frame, we're going to compute the distance to the predictions. So this distance here, and then this distance here, and then this distance here. And we're going to see which one is the lowest. So obviously this is the lowest distance in this particular case. And then we're going to check, is that less than our certain threshold for us? So if we take a look at match current blobs to existing blobs, uh, first we uh, iterate through existing blobs and then we set that by default a match has not been found and then we predict the next position. So that gives us um, the dash circle equivalent and then we're going to iterate in our outer for loop here through current frame blobs and then we're going to iterate in our uh, inner for loop through existing blobs and we're going to compute those distances that I had mentioned on that slide a moment ago. And then when we've computed those and we've figured out the least distance for each of the current frame blobs to one of the predictions, we're going to see is that distance less than what our acceptable threshold standard is. And experimentally I found that if we did the current frame blobs uh, diagonal, the diagonal size of its bounding rectangle times a half, that made a good standard of is this distance close enough to consider this a match to this blob here? And if so, we add it to our existing blob. So then there's two other cases we need to consider. We need to consider the case of what if, a say, a new blob just came in the frame here, or a new blob just came in the frame down here, and it clearly isn't a match with one of the existing ones. Uh, in that case, we're going to simply call it add new blob. And the other case would be, what if you can imagine if things continued here, this blob eventually is going to get off the edge of the screen. And how we're going to handle that is we're going to check for um, each existing blob at the end of our function here. We're going to check if a current match was found this time through the function. And if it was not, then we're going to increment the number of times that blob has not had a match by one. And if that count should get to be greater than or equal to five, then we're going to say that that blob, we're not going to track it anymore because it must have moved off the edge of the screen at that point. And that's really kind of the meat of the program. After this function here, uh, we have just pretty much some straightforward bookkeeping. Uh, here we're making a copy of frame two and we're drawing the blob info on the image and then we're here we check if um, one of the blobs has crossed the line or not. So that's simply a matter of looking at the previous frame. Was it below the line? And then in the current frame, was it above the line? And if so, it just crossed. And then so we're going to increment car count here um, within this function, check if blob crossed the line. And then as well as getting the result of that is going to allow us to determine do we draw the line as green when a car is crossing it or red when it's not. And then we're going to draw the car count on the image. That was the car count in the upper right image, uh, upper right corner of the image that, in green that you saw. And then we're going to update the um, image box on the form. And then now we simply do some bookkeeping to prepare for the next iteration. And then we definitely uh, want to remember to call do events at the end here to give control back to the operating system for a moment so it can repaint the screen for us. And we already took a look at match current frame blobs to existing blobs. And here are some of the helper functions here. So add blob to existing blobs, add new blob, distance between points, which is simply the Pythagorean theorem, and draw and show contours, draw and show contours again, depending on if we're passing in uh, contours or blobs with contours that we're going to show. And then we're going to check if the blob crossed the line here. And here we can draw the blob info on the image and then draw the car count on the image. And this is an, a function get text, text size because for some reason in uh, MGOOCV, this uh, wrapper for OpenCV, the get text uh, size function from OpenCV has not been implemented, but that's okay. We can just manually implement it uh, pretty easily like this. So that completes uh, this video and this series. And we'll just go ahead and play, uh, play the video one more time here. Uh, sort of as a finale. So, and, and again, the numbers on the cars are, um, that's simply the index number of the car in the list. The, the actual count is at the upper right here. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and so on. So uh, I think this project worked out pretty well, and hopefully somebody uh, out there that's looking into blob tracking or especially car counting specifically found this beneficial. Um, I'm not really sure what content I'm going to do next as far as videos, or if I may go a different direction, I have some different things in mind, but in any case, if anybody has any feelings one way or the other, please post in the comments, and also please rate, comment, and, and subscribe, and if you found this video uh, beneficial, please consider uh, supporting me on Patreon, and I'll see everybody in the next one.